Okay, so a lot of information there. We'll be moving on to our next speaker, who is from, um, well, who is running AYO Connect, Indonesia's financial API platform. Uh, his name is Adi Vora, who's CTO, four years at this company, um, but with 14 years experience. And um, co-founder and built the product from the ground up. So the topic here is going to be integrating and managing 3,000 digital products through one API. Wow. Um, there's going to be questions, I'm sure, or they're encouraged. Please put them in the, the hop-in window. So I see Addy's here on the screen, ready to go. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you. Hi there. Yeah, great, great to see you. And uh, yes. looking forward to, to how you're going to simplify and, and improve the API experience. Yes, looking forward to it as well. Thank you. So thank you, Jonathan. Um, and um, welcome, everybody. Um, very glad to present. Uh, introducing myself, I'm Adi. I'm, I'm the CTO here uh, at IO Connect. And today, we're going to be talking a bit about how we at IO Connect uh, are integrating and managing over 3,000 digital products to one API. So let's talk a little bit about Indonesia as a as a country and how bill payments work. So Indonesia has a as a population of two hundred uh, roughly about two hundred eighty million, uh, and out of that two hundred twenty million Indonesians pay bills. So that, uh, that's about seventy eight percent. Ninety percent of these bills are recurring, so they have to pay them month on month, and almost uh, every Indonesian pays uh, an on average eight bills a month. That's almost two a week. Also, based on uh, research we have done, uh, low-income Indonesians spend almost 40% of their income on, on bill payments. That's a pretty high number, um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a very fragmented market. So what are some of the popular bill payment types, right? So as per, our, uh, as per a survey we did with, with customers, electricity is one of the key ones, which people, of course, have to keep the lights on in their houses, uh, and 84% are paid month on month. Uh, of course, then comes with mobile phone bills, uh, your internet recharges, uh, water, and then there are some lending products like mortgage and um, insurance that make up the top six categories. But outside these, there are almost more than 25 bill payment types that Indonesians pay, uh, which includes uh, your, your state-owned insurance, which is BPJS, um, digital vouchers, uh, streaming platforms like Shop, Shop, uh, Spotify and uh, Netflix, uh, Google Play, credit card payments, gas, internet, and et cetera. So these make up primary the categories the, uh, the Indonesians pay bills for. And Indonesia has a very unique geographical landscape, right? It's a very fragmented country with having more than 17,000 islands. Uh, some of them, these are very, very remote. Uh, and also uh, the digital uh, penetration is, is it's not uh, there yet in all these remote places. And also only 50% of the population uh, is, uh, is banked. So 50% is still unbanked. Um, and our one of the challenges we wanted to kind of accomplish in this was uh, how do we connect these remote utility shops or stations across the country uh, and digitize their products and enable users to pay bills on different platforms? And to give a, a good context and a little story uh, about this, a couple of years ago, um, we had the chance to, uh, to integrate a, a water station from a very remote part of Indonesia in one corner, a place called Sabang, which has a population of 60,000 people. Um, and we had a chance to understand, you know, uh, before that they, uh, the, the people could only go to the station and, and pay bills there. And uh, we had a chance to digitize their product. And, and, you know, they had infrastructure. They didn't have an infrastructure or data layer. So we kind of guided them to build this out and, and build, the, build the data layer as well and, and open up APIs that can plug into our systems, uh, which enable their customers to sit at home and, and use different applications or go to the corner shop and pay bills. And that is kind of what we wanted to accomplish with, with iConnect. On the other side, uh, how do Indonesians pay bills, right? So there are different bill payment points uh, throughout the country. Uh, ATMs are one uh, and mobile banking uh, applications that are there. Uh, people also use online platforms like e-commerce and, and their mobile wallets, wallets which have recently come up uh, in the startup ecosystem. Um, but then there are other 
unique ways where you know you can pay uh, to your local post office you can pay numerous bill types you can go to your corner shop and you know uh, use uh, a application they are using to to pay bills um and for us then the second set of challenge here was you know how do we build one api that you know uh, that enables all of these different bill payment points to seamlessly pay bills uh, and that is kind of what we build the network around from the biller side and and from the payment point side and what was the problems that these guys were facing or are actually already are facing right so bill payments naturally is a low margin category uh, you as a customer you know we don't want to pay anything over what our bill amount is right and we don't want to pay the extra charge and and for uh, consumer facing applications the margin normally comes from the biller side um so a lot of the applications it's not the core business you know you need a you need a, quant a quantitative business to to uh, have a profitable one uh, and uh, that's there and but the key focus here is you know um it's a high cost of building and running right building a team having operations um payment points you know, need to connect individually to each bill provider or aggregator and then resulting in high operation and maintenance costs they have to have a support team they have to have different apis and infrastructure running all of this and that was the problem that we saw that we we, we wanted to solve uh in the ecosystem and the solution that that we came up with is is io connect so with io connect we have enabled more than 3000 digital bill payment products uh in 25 different bill payment categories and enable them to one api and that's a little bit what we're going to talk about more is how how we've kind of made this possible so a little bit of where io connect comes in so on the left hand side as you guys see there's the bill providers uh which are actually the utilities the the property payments um and and the people who uh the gas electricity etc and they have their own api some of them i do not and that's where we help digitize them and the other side we have the digital platforms of fintech the retail the banks who have their end customers who who want to kind of pay the bills and what we try and do is we are trying to bridge the billers and the digital platforms through this api network which is io connect uh which which we have kind of created and and uh, that's kind of what we will uh, to make it easy for both partners so from one end to have access to all of these pain points and from digital payment perspective have access to uh, enable our customers to uh, pay numerous uh, different bill bill types and also we wanted to start tackling the daily complex challenges these that both billers and channel pa partners face Uh, on an everyday basis right so one of the key things of course is tech integration um and is you know instead of connecting to all of these different billers through individual apis how can we enable a simple single api and, and and that's what one that is the core focus of us to make it easy for for tech integration um second one is of course deposit handling uh, and stock management which is very important towards particularly towards prepaid products and making sure that they're available throughout throughout the month um then error transaction mitigation very one key point where you know making sure that the customer has a good experience along with success optimization and we realized when we started off that the success percentage in the bill payment space was pretty low uh, and how we optimize and make sure that you know uh, 99% of bill payments done by customers are successful uh, or at least have visibility um another aspect is live reconciliation to make sure that you know if as a customer if i am paying money for a bill uh it should reflect on the on the bill payment platform and i don't want uh, a late payment to come in thinking i've paid it but it's not and it's very impo important for us to have the live reconciliation happening uh, and the other two things is the support and uh, connecting the channel partners with the billers towards escalation and understanding some core issues uh, while paying bills and also supporting channel partners with one platform for all categories where they can kind of escalate certain issues towards uh, products or latency or, or connections etc so that's kind of what we wanted to kind of uh, solve on on a daily complex uh, challenges and then what we came up with what well, are two key api suites one is the digital products api which connects merchants with 3000 bill and bill, bill and digital products and the second one is the channel gateway api which connects billers with all of these different payment points as mentioned earlier and together is what we call our open bill net open bill network by by io connect so a little bit statistics on you know uh, what what we have so far so we have more than 3000 bill payment products uh connecting over 1000 bill providers uh and on the other end we have more than 100 channel partners who are using our restful apis to enable their customers 
to pay bills. Uh, and then we have an annual API hits, uh, increasing API hits of 440 million in last year. Uh, and that's, that's ever increasing. And a little overview of, you know, our API driven network and how we see it. So uh, through this slide, you can see that we are connected to different domains like the O2O players, the online players, uh, the, the startups, the, the fintech startups, the banks, the retail. And from the biller end, we connected with the PLN, which is the electricity boards, uh, the government insurance companies, uh, the e-wallets for top-ups, for um, internet and pay TV. Um, and this is kind of an overview of, of the network that, that we've created in the last five years that we've been building this. Suppose this, let's get a little bit into biller support and what the products we've built. So from a biller end, you know, there are key things that we build, build for our billers. One is visibility towards transactions. Uh, for them to understand the payment points and the uh, understand their customers and where which payment points they are doing transactions uh, and the live status of those. Uh, automated re reconciliation, uh, a big pain point for a lot of the billers to, to have visibility on, on uh, transaction success rates across the system and uh, how they're reflecting for customers. Um, settlement and deposit is actually the fund flow from the customer to the biller and visibility on, on that angle. Uh, analytics was a very interesting point because we, we found that a lot of the billers didn't have visibility on customer trends and how they were paying bills and what platforms and how they're interacting with the bill types. So give them visibility and help them improve their systems to support their customers better. And then, of course, the last part is the bill generation engine, which is particularly uh, set up for you know bill billers who do not have any digital presence. And we allow them to upload their bills on our system, uh, which enables it to be digitalized and, and paid on different partner systems. From the other end, we have the partner integrations, right? which is the key, the key focus here was to build one API uh, across all categories. And we'll speak a little bit more about this in the next slides. Uh, but that was the key focus uh, of, you know, instead of integrating uh, numerous uh, thousand billers that we have, we have one API with consistent response that they can connect to and, and, and enable all of this on their platforms. Uh, advanced transactional dashboard with live updates, understanding you know, details of how their customers are paying and, and disputes that are happening, possibly happening uh, on the platforms. Um, detailed bill information based on requirements of the billers. And this was important because you know, each biller requires certain data to be shown to their customer and working with individual billers for the channel partners to understand and display was a really big pain point. And that's something that we took up to understand the space, to understand what information from the billers that we need to show the customers, make sure that that experience is seamless, and then open that up to our API to channel partners to enable them to show it in the best and easiest way. Uh, next is, of course, structured consistent responses. Again, we'll speak a little bit about this, but one of the yeah different billers have different um, response types, different uh, network protocols, and making sure that you know the channel partners don't have to worry about all of this, and then we provide a consistent, re uh, restful, structured response APIs for them. And the last part, of course, is recurring payments, is enabling channel partners to enable their customers to have continuous recurring payments uh, through their platform using our APIs as well. So let's talk a little bit about our bill payment API, right? So we, we try and call it, it's called API to UI. And that was our core focus is how do we simplify a bill payments API across categories to make it easy for you know channel partners to integrate and, and show their customers the right information. And then we broke it down into, into a, a set structure where, you know, it's very easy to convert this API into a, a viable, understandable UI for the customer with minimal work across categories. So this is an example of a postpaid electricity payment. Uh, and on, on the right hand side, you see that you know how our API helps the customer understand the breakdown of the bill. And this is based on the biller requirements as well. So the partner doesn't have to uh, worry about you know what. Uh, information to display, etc. Uh, they just have to follow the information we give them because we verified it with the biller. And that was the core focus to kind of build a common API structured um, format uh, towards our partners, towards to build a good UI for their customers. Um, 
to speak about a little bit about the system overview, I haven't gone too much into the technicality of the architecture here, but I wanted to explain a little bit about you know the, the system flow and how we integrated uh, both ends, right? So on the left hand side, as you guys see, the biller the biller APIs, and we uh, these are just examples where we get them in different formats. We have XML, we have the ISO format, which is used by ATM machines, and then of course the JSON uh, JSON format is there. And then they have different network protocols to connect with their system. Some want tunnels, some want sockets, some want REST with HTTPS. And, and that, that's where we decided to kind of separate out the network layer and build a layer, layer towards connecting to billers that's independent and robust enough to handle uh, connections and, and, a, and a failover protocol there as well. And then the core focus is our control room, which is what kind of enables all of these integrations to, to different builders. And of course, we, we went for a very distributed architecture uh, where you know the builder API is on the, that's a suite of microservices that connect to individual builders and are scalable individually. So traffic on particular builders can only affect certain uh, services that need to scale, keeps our architecture lean as well. But then there are up supporting services like the response code or the success module, the live reconciliation, as I spoke about earlier. And of course, we, we pay a lot of attention to logging and audit, which is core to protecting customer data and making sure that there no, no sensitive data is being passed on further. Uh, and all of this is run by our API wrapper, which enables us to create this one API that talks to all of these different functions. And then on the right hand side, of course, you have the partner services. And the key service here is a transactional service, which enables partners to do uh, bill payment transactions, right? And supported by the product service authenticator, uh, the partner reconciliation, et cetera, et cetera. This is a very, very overview of it. You know, of course, there are a lot more moving parts in the system, uh, but to simplify how it works from end to end is kind of an overview of it in this slide. Of course, you know, as I mentioned earlier, low margin category, and you know, for us, it was always about uh, quantitative. So how do we make it scale while being lean, right? So of course, one of this, uh, our key focus was containerized infrastructure. And we'll talk about a couple of case studies there of how, how that helps us there. Um, Biller specific microservice. So again, you know, very important to have a scalable on biller level so that traffic on, on bill payment dates for particular billers can be handled and, and can be scaled up on that level rather than the whole system wise and have a dynamic scaling configuration that helps us do this and uh, us understand bill payments behavior to make the system, you know, uh, in a way understand and learn from these scalable configurations to, to improve themselves. And of course, on the other end, you know, the transactional scale based on partner demand, making sure that our partner systems uh, or our transactional systems are scalable independently as well, so the partner demands can be met with, with great latency. So let's talk two minutes about a case study for a post-paid electricity payment. So the trend we observed here is, you know, start of the month when the bill comes out, a lot of people kind of pay and are up for paying the bills. And of course, towards the end of the month as well, when the bills are due, a lot of people kind of, you know, want to kind of clear it off. Uh, but post that, in, in this case, post the 25th of the month, um, electricity payments are not allowed. And that's kind of where it goes down. The yellow line a little bit shows on how our pods scale up and down based on that demand. Um, and that's a little bit of, you know, how we've kind of made auto scaling part of our uh, architecture. Another case study is uh, on a channel partner promo campaign. So a channel partner is having a pool size like the uh, the mobile recharge or the, the telcos of Indonesia. So if channel partner is having a promo campaign and how our systems on, a, on an hourly basis uh, or even lower than that understand scale and scale up, Biller specific. So in this case, you see the red line is one of our popular telcos, telcom so, and it scales up only that service more because that there's more demand for that. But the other ones scale up as expected, uh, and then scale down when when the traffic goes back to normal. So that that uh, the micro level scaling was very important for us to to kind of break down and keep the scale lean in our system. Also, one of the key focuses for us was to make it fault tolerance, right? And the challenges we faced here was an unstable biller infrastructure. The biller, infra uh, biller systems go down. Um, there is a, there's, the, we have faced a lot of problems with, you know, uh, random um, downtimes and, and making sure. And then we had to build a solution of auto deduction of, uh, auto detection of product disruptions and, and having, having a notification system to our channel partners and eventually to the end customers to handle this 
the customer experience does not break. Uh, inconsistent responses, very, very important. And we had to figure out a, a common response code format and, and a success format to kind of handle this and make sure that the consistency comes from our systems and not dependent on biller systems. Um, spoke about this a little earlier, the varied uh, biller network connections. And then that's where we decided to build a, a robust network layer to handle different connections and security from that side and move it out of our uh, biller microservices. Um, and also network latency and packet loss. And, and to maintain success rate is very important to have um, a way to mitigate loss of data, right? And that's where the advanced queuing system comes in, where we make sure that there's no uh, data loss, but also a retry mechanism where, you know, if so certain things are missed, we make sure that the customer who's paid for the bill is, uh, is able to get his bill um, processed by the bill provider. A quick overview of our architecture. Um, of course, we are we are using Kubernetes engine as, as our platform to run all of these microservices. makes uh, makes it easier for us to to manage and, and handle the scale. Um, we try to keep it as horizontal in scale as possible. So our compute instances, which are our nodes, are very scalable horizontally. Uh, on the top layer, our microservices are very ho uh, scalable horizontally as well. And then we have supporting a uh, storage layer, which makes our data persistent and makes sure that we don't lose out. And uh, uh, the key part of it is logging and monitoring to make sure that all of these different systems are tracked and, and uh, the right logging is done. And because of the distributed system, we have uh, the ability to have a, a, a different or a mixed tech stack. And, and as you see, we have a lot of different technologies that we use throughout the system. Uh, for our microservices. So what is the future? What is the next step for us in, in bill payments and APIs? And, and for us, we are really, really excited for the auto billing API. And that, that is, you know, enabling recurring payments for your for customers through channel partners. Um, using payment processing as well, right? So the first step, of course, is bill enrollment, which is customers enrolling for bills um, and setting up or signing up for the whole uh, auto debit or recurring payments. Um, then sending reminders. So sending reminders before the bill is generated to, to let them know the spend that's coming up and, and the possible bill that's generated. Um, then processing their payment with the card on file or you know, accessing certain banking APIs uh, to process those payments as well based on customer consent. And then the last part, which is also very important, is bill presentment, making sure that the bill that they paid is presented um, very well uh, in, in either email or notified to the customer. So very, very excited for something that we've launched recently as well. Uh, and uh, very excited for this product to kind of bring it up. This is going to be the next set of APIs that we bring it out there. Um, and that's kind of a little bit from, from that end. And that brings me in to uh, brings me into the end of my presentation. I uh, hope you guys um, got some good insights of how we built IO Connect from ground up, um, and how we're kind of sustaining this architecture going forward. Adi, fantastic presentation! Thanks very much. And just on time, we have two minutes remaining for questions, which can be put in the hop in chat. So, given the limited time, I was going to summarize, but I don't think we have time for that. Um, where can people contact you if they want to find out more? Um, they can contact us through our website. You can, uh, and uh, of course, to the hop in chat, I'll be there to kind of uh, answer any questions uh, to the forum that's there as well. Yeah, if you could hang around for that. And, and amazing Absolutely. work. I mean, a tremendous vision, 50% unbanked, and then the number of billers, 3,000, and channel partners, 1,000. And it seems you've given it incredible thought, everything from biller support to fraud management and thinking through the whole process, right? Um, just, just, an, just an ending point. You also gave a, uh, if there is one, you also gave the product futures. How much have you yeah. done and how much more have you got to go in terms of getting the coverage, especially to the remote locations and those unbanked people? Um, there is a there's a long way to go. Like we've we've covered quite a bit, and we're trying to kind of you know the water station was a good example of how we're trying to go to these remote places and connect and digitize these bill payments. Uh, but there's a long way to go, and there there are so many 
payment points as well as bill payment channels that we want to connect to yeah. and open up on our platform. Uh, and we are super excited to kind of work with them and, and enable. Well, it, it, it's great that you thought through the architecture and the scalability and the lean agile approach. And I know that you're also into OKRs, right? So yes. <laughs> there's a lot more there. So we have to move on. So thanks very much. We go and introduce the next speaker and um, Addy will be around in the uh, hop in chat to answer any questions. We can do that concurrently. Thank you so once much, again. Thank thanks you. very much. Pleasure. pleasure meeting you and thanks for your presentation.